Hey guys, I got the app up and running right here, and this is how it's gonna look for the rest of the tutorials. I'm gonna have Visual Studio Code on the left over here, and then on the right, I'll have an iOS or an iPhone emulator to show you as we're coding what it looks like. Now, I would recommend for you guys to, if you're following along, to have this actually running on your actual device, and it doesn't matter if you have an iOS or an Android phone, uh, you can get this working. But if you do want to run this on emulator, what you're going to want to do is in terminal, um, make sure you're in the folder where your project is, just do npm run iOS or npm run Android. Now to get that working, you need to have the emulator uh, installed on your computer, either iOS or the Android Studio one. So npm run iOS will do the iOS simulator and npm run Android will start uh, the Android one. Now for the rest of you guys that are going to run on your phone, and this is what I would recommend, is you're just going to type npm start. Now when you type npm start, it's going to look a lot like this. So you're going to see a big little QR code like so, and it's going to say it started. So what you're going to want to do is on your phone, install the app called Expo Client, or Expo on Android, and I'll link these in the description below. So install this on your phone, and then what you're going to do is you're going to add a new project, and you're going to scan the QR code that pops up here um, in your terminal. And you can use the terminal in Visual Studio Code if you're using Visual Studio Code, or just iTerm or any terminal. The Windows command prompt works as well. Um, and scan this, and then you should see the app pop up on your phone. Now it's important to note that you need to have the uh, your phone and your computer need to be on the same network for this particular one to work. Um, if they're not or can't be on the same network, do set up an emulator over here like I have. Okay, so this is how you can see the app. And now I just want to go over quickly what are all these files we have on the left and what they're doing. Now a lot of these you're never ever going to even need to touch and you don't need to worry about. So the first thing you should see is this .expo folder. Now you probably won't see this until you actually start up the application. Um, and it's just what Expo uses. I believe it caches some stuff. And you really don't even have to worry about this .expo folder. Um, this is something that this uses and not really us. Um, and all of these things you won't even have to worry about as a beginner. .babelrc is one of them. This is something that is used to transform your code um, when compiling. And again, this is something we're never going to need to touch especially as a beginner, and I've never needed to tweak this, at least with React Native. Um, the presets are pretty good. And they're going to see a folder called .flowconfig. If you've never heard of Flow, maybe you've heard of TypeScript. Um, basically what those projects are is for adding types to JavaScript. So by default, you use const or let or var instead of, for example, int or double like in Java. But with Flow, what you can do is actually what's called typing, the programming language. Um, and when you type it, basically you say you want this to be an integer, you want this to be a boolean. And this is just the config for one of the systems to do that called flow. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this because we're not going to be using flow for this project. Um, but flow can be used and it's pretty nice. Um, dot get ignore, this just ignores. This is a default config that they gave us. This is uh, for using git and it's what files to ignore. For example, it's ignoring node modules which can get very big in this .expo folder, which it doesn't need. Um, and then watchman config, this is for when you're typing and your computer automatically will update the app over here. Again, don't have to touch uh, the config for that at all. Um, you'll see app.js, we'll be talking more in depth about this. Um, this is the application, the code that's having run over here. App.json is a settings file for Expo, and we'll be using this when we want to, for example, deploy our Expo app. Um, it's pretty much a settings and config file for putting it on the Expo store. Here is a test. This is for testing our app. They call it app.test. We're going to delete this because we're not going to need it right now. Um, we'll use it later. Package.json over here. Um, this should be normal to you guys. You should see this before. This is just basically the manifest file uh, for JavaScript where all your packages are. So when I was running npm run uh, start or, M or npm start or npm run Android, this is what it was actually running right here, these scripts. Uh, so I was running React Native scripts start iOS. 
Um, and here we can see the dependencies. We have React, React Native, and Expo, and some other stuff here. And then here's the README. This is the README from Create React Native. You can get rid of that too. And then here's a yarn lock. If you're using yarn, you don't have to worry about that at all. Okay, so let's look at app.js real quick. If you've never seen um, React Native before or React, this might look a little foreign. Up here we have imports, and this is basically the start of your application. So this is what it starts to read. Here's the main class app, um, and you notice it's export by default. Um, this is how it knows which class. So you can have multiple classes in a file. Export default is telling us this is the class that we want to actually render. Um, you'll notice how there's a style sheet here and there's a view and a text. So instead of using HTML tags, so if you've ever used React before, um, what you do is use divs or h1s or paragraph tags. Now with React Native, there is these tags that you actually get from React Native. View is similar to a div, text is just text, and we can see the text here is actually displaying here. And this is a nice thing when I was talking about a nice developer experience uh, with Expo and with Create React Native app. Create React Native app. So you notice how it says the word open here. I can change this to close and I hit save. And as soon as I hit save, you'll notice it has a loading indicator, it bundles it, and now it says the word close. So you can see how fast it just updates. And the same thing should be happening on your phone when you're changing this. You should see a live update. And what you can do, as it says here, you can shake your phone and that will bring up a menu to do different things. Um, but again, we're here, we're importing React. So whenever you see this right here, this is called JSX. That's the name of these tags, um, the language for it. So whenever you're using JSX, you have to import React. And we're also ex extending a React component. That's why we imported React here. And then here we're importing React Native. And this should look pretty self-explanatory. Uh, we need a style sheet, text, and view components. So each one of these tags is called a component. Um, this is a view component, a text component, and notice how we are created three text components and one view component. And then we passed um, in a style. So this is how you pass parameters to components. So to this view component, we passed a, a style. They call them style props. So we pass the style prop, and what we passed is styles.container. So styles is down here, and this is how you create styles for uh, React Native. So this is the recommended way to do it, is to create a style sheet and using .create. Now that's if you want to do regular. There's also other libraries like styled components and different third-party libraries that you can use to make styling look a little bit different and almost similar to CSF, CSS if you've ever heard of that. But you notice this actually looks pretty much like CSS here as well. Uh, but things are camel cased, so that's an important difference. And it's an object. But so this is us styling this. So you know, you can change the background color. I could change this to red, for example. Um, and now it's all red. So that's changing the style. And I believe, let's let's show you guys what an error message looks like. So, so when you get an error and you, for example, you save it, you'll get a red screen and it'll tell you syntax error or whatever is going wrong. So what you do is you can just fix the error, um, save it, and it doesn't always restart here. You're gonna have to click this reload and it'll go ahead and reload after you fix that. So that's kind of the uh, setup and the layout of app.js. So what we're gonna be doing in the next video is expanding on this app uh, and adding more components. So basically all we're ever gonna do in the rest of this video um, is adding more components to this application until it looks and functions the way we want it to. Well, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.